You've reached step number four, how to apply our natural finish top coat and install. So you cannot believe how well this new matte finish turns out. In this video, we're gonna show you how we install Stone Coat Epoxy countertops. You're gonna learn how we do a vessel sink and how we install to new cabinetry. You can do this over old existing projects as well, and you're gonna learn how to install right now. We were passionate about this project. We built everything, including the cabinetry, from scratch. You don't need to spend thousands to have a fantastic design. You could do it on a budget, on a dime. Epoxy your house, stone coat. Learn the tips and tricks of install, how to do a top coat like a pro. Stay tuned, enjoy the video. You got this. Hey, Philip again. Welcome to part four of our four part series on how to build an epoxy countertop. In part one, we built the substrate, Part two, we poured the color coat. Part three, we poured the clear coat. And in part four, we're gonna install and apply the top coat. Also, we work really hard on these videos, so if you wanted to help us and subscribe to our channel, you can make us one step closer to getting our goal of a million subscribers. Thank you. All right, it's step number four, how to apply the top coat and install. First, we needed a base. We needed something to install the new countertops onto. I had built the cabinets from scratch, and this was a passion project. This was for my mom and dad, and we made an old cinder block house look like a log home. These were the finishing touches, and it was time to install the cabinetry. It was simple to do, and it was fun. It was almost like finishing a project that we've been working on for so long, and this was the culmination of that effort, and it was coming out beautifully. I love this stone coat countertop project that we did because the color choice to me was second to none. I had my good buddy Kenny Draculas from RK3 Designs helping me install and we were putting in the screw strips. This was a build up strip so that our drop edge of that countertop had something to overlap. This was three quarter inch plywood so that we could do one of two things. We could either screw from underneath that cabinet to tie into the MDF, or we could simply use silicone dollops on top of those screw strips. We were also applying a coat of Red Guard. This is a waterproof membrane. My friend Rhonda was applying that for me as we were getting everything prepped. This helps with any moisture that may come in contact with the underside of your countertop. Here we're removing the drips using our 50 grit metal sanding disc. Remember, this video series was how to build a countertop from scratch off-site, so we didn't worry about scraping the drips on-site, we knew we would sand them off. I'm also going through before I apply the top coat and flattening the entire surface with my random orbital sander using 220 grit sandpaper. After that, I'm gonna wipe the dust to prep for the ultimate top coat. I like the ultimate top coat because it adds that natural finish and ultimate durability. It's extremely scratch resistant. It gives you that beautiful shine that looks like natural stone and unlimited durability when it comes to man-made finishes. This is absolutely second to none. I will be applying the ultimate top coat to every countertop that I build and install. I love this stuff. It's a two roller technique. After I mix the material at a two to one ratio, I begin my wet rolling. I've taken my quarter inch nap roller and I fully saturated it in the ultimate top coat. As soon as I'm done rolling it on wet, I immediately dry roll the surface to remove any excess material. This is the key to getting zero lap lines and a very tight finish that lays out. The ultimate top coat allows you to return to using that kitchen quickly, but it also dries fast, so you gotta move fast. So dry roll immediately after you wet roll to remove excess material and you'll get very beautiful results. I'm also putting the pressure on the side of my roller that actually has the bend in that roller cage. That way I feather finish it out like a pro painter. It's okay to cross hatch or go perpendicular to your strokes, but when I dry roll, I like to go with the final grain of that countertop. In this case, it's going long horizontally, so that's how I'll finish my dry rolling. Remember, all the pressure on the back side of that roller so that I feather finish those lap lines and they become erased. Remember to break your project up into manageable sections. You can do a two foot by four foot section, do the wet roll and the dry roll, and then start the next section feather finishing and overlapping where you do start and stop those sections. 
This ensures that you get in that wet window so that it doesn't start to set up and you actually cement those lap lines in. Break it up into manageable sections and you'll get beautiful results. I didn't simply just do a vanity countertop for this project. I in fact did the entire house. So when I applied the top coat, I did it to the entire project by breaking it up into sections. Question of the day. We've never gone this in depth with the entire process of how to build an epoxy countertop. Do you like how we split them up in four videos and, and left all of the information we possibly could in the video? Let us know. Do you like them long and split up or do you like them short and sweet? Kenny and I had fun pretending this countertop was heavy as we slid it on top of the screw strips. After that, we attached it by coming underneath that cabinet with one and a quarter inch coarse thread screws and screwing through that plywood into the bottom side of those countertops. It's time to install my vanity countertop on top of those screw strips, but first I'm gonna scribe against this pony wall. You see, most walls aren't a perfect 90 degree angle. Sometimes they're out of square. So I applied blue painter's masking tape so I had something to draw on. I butted it to the pony wall and then I used a spacer to actually trace against so that I got my high point and my low point so that I could actually follow those points and it will look like this countertop actually grew into that pony wall. I got the correct angle and this is a simple process by scribing against that pony wall and when you slide it into place and dry fit it, it should fit like a glove. Now that I've dry fit the countertop, it's time to install. I'm finding the center point by using the handle of the cabinetry as my center point reference, and then I'm gonna put blue painter's tape so I can draw on top of the surface. I'm gonna use a large four inch hole saw. Why? I'm installing a flat bottom vessel sink. I'll need to attach a tailpiece to this vessel sink, so I need a big hole to do that. Plus the vessel sink has a large footprint that's gonna hide this hole. So give myself plenty of room and not fight the plumbing. That's a pro tip. If you have tight tolerances, you may need to do a smaller access hole for that tailpiece. When cutting and shaping and actually making everything fit to size on site, I'm simply using carbide teeth, fine teeth, blades and hole saws. Okay, same thing that you use for cutting wood, corian, laminate, and these types of substrates. Epoxy and wood is quite easy to actually cut and fit on site, and the wood tools are the same thing you're gonna get at the hardware store. It's not overcomplicated. I'm dry fitting that sink to make sure I know where it's gonna sit and what direction it's gonna sit. I have to plan for that vessel sink faucet to protrude up out of the countertop and work within this rock vessel sink, which I absolutely loved. What do you think? I love how this thing came out. We were just situating it and kind of eyeballing where that would sit before we silicone this thing to its permanent home. We're admiring our work and it's time to remove it so we can put dollops of 100% silicone on those screw strips. Remember, when we built this countertop, we built it with a drop edge. This allows us to hide these screw strips, but to give us something to screw from underneath to attach the countertop, as well as a wider profile. These are two inches so that we can glue to them and we won't make a mess within that cabinetry. You also wanna seal the hole that I cut for this vessel sink. You can use red guard, you can use a waterproof membrane. Here I'm using some excess caulking to seal that so water doesn't mess with that cut where I have exposed the epoxy and the raw wood. I'm also doing a pretty big insurance policy of a bead of silicone that's not only gonna hold that rock sink down, but it's also gonna act as a water gasket. The weight of this rock actually helped us too. The weight was no problem for the stone coat epoxy because I have supports about every two feet. That's a pro tip, you wanna have two foot supports within that kitchen and you'll get no bowing or warping with those countertops. Great comment. We got a great comment from Alan Reeves. He asks, when you are finished, how do you clean your equipment or do you use it and dispose it? As a matter of fact, Mike talks really in depth on video three of our four part series of how to make epoxy countertops. Here's a sample of that. How do you clean a bucket? Okay, everybody's gonna ask, how do I clean my tools? Well, I can use isopropyl alcohol, I can use acetone, and I could come to this $2 bucket and use more than $2 worth of acetone to clean it out, okay? okay. <laughs> or, thanks again for the great comment, Alan Reeves. The fact that all of this is made out of like, wood and epoxy and stone is just <laughs> insane.
So you cannot believe how well this new matte finish turned out. I mean, you can scratch it with a penny, like you can do anything to this almost, and it will beautifully set the stage to match your rock face edge, <laughs> stone sink, stone floor, stone coat, epoxy your house, stone coat. All right, congratulations. You made it to the end of our four part series on how to build a countertop. At this point, you should be an epoxy professional and we can't wait to hear about all the cool projects you make. Thanks again for watching and from the Stone Coat Countertops team, you got this. Hold on a second, Phil. I got something for you here, man. What about that four hour video that we did? You know, those are the same steps that we did right here in this video, but we went live. We built from scratch, from raw MDF in four hours, that entire kitchen on that very project. Do you guys wanna learn how we did that kitchen? We actually went live. I was worried about making a bunch of mistakes, but it was a pretty easy process. We made a few bumps in the road, but you're gonna learn from those hiccups and you're gonna learn exactly how to apply this four part series to a full blown kitchen. You gotta check out that video, it's fantastic. I was nervous, but I'm glad I did it. I show that you can do these fast. It doesn't take weeks to refinish anything. You can do it in four hours, go check it out. Hey, Phil, will you link him to that in the end screen right now? Guys, he's gonna put a video for you to go watch. If you watch that, maybe then you'll become an epoxy pro. Now you know.